Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection September 6, 2021 Monday The Monday of the 23rd week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the letter to the Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 to chapter 2 verse 3. Brothers and sisters, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past, but now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. For this I labor and struggle, in accord with the exercise of his power working within me. For I want you to know how great a struggle I am having for you and for those in Laodicea and all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged as they are brought together in love, to have all the richness of assured understanding, for the knowledge of the mystery of God, Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, the Word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 62 verse 6 to 7 and 9 Let our response be, In God is my safety and my glory. Only in God be at rest, my soul, for from Him comes my hope. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be disturbed. Response. In God is my safety and my glory. Trust in Him at all times, O my people. Pour out your hearts before Him. God is our refuge. Response. In God is my safety and my glory. Alleluia. John chapter 10 verse 27. Alleluia, Alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 6 verse 6 to 11. On a certain Sabbath Jesus went into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, Come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil? To save life rather than to destroy it? Looking around at them all, he then said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video.
the reflection on today's gospel. This passage presents Jesus who cures a man with a withered hand. Different from the context of chapters 3 and 4 inches which Jesus is alone, now here he is surrounded by his disciples and the women who go around with him. Therefore, here we have Jesus always moving. In the first stages of this journey the reader finds different ways of listening to the word of Jesus on the part of those who follow him and which, definitively, could be summarized in two experiences, which recall, in turn, two types of approaches, that of Peter and that of the centurion. The first one encounters Jesus who invites him after the miraculous catch to become a fisher of men. Then he falls on his knees before Jesus. Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. The second one does not have any direct communication with Jesus. He has heard people speak very well about Jesus and he sends his envoys to ask for the cure of one of his servants who is dying. He is asking for something not for himself, but for a person who was a favorite of his. The figure of Peter expresses the attitude of the one who, discovering himself a sinner, places all his acts under the influence of the word of Jesus. The centurion, showing solicitude for the servant, learns to listen to God. Well, between these itineraries or attitudes which characterize the itinerant journey of Jesus, is placed the cure of the man who presents the withered hand. This event of the miracle takes place in a context of debate or controversy. The ears of corn picked on the Sabbath and on the act of curing on a Saturday. Precisely the withered hand. Between the two discussions there is the crucial role played by the word of Jesus. The Son of Man is master of the Sabbath. Continuing with this passage we ask ourselves what is the meaning of this withered hand? It is a symbol of the salvation of man who is taken back to the original moment, that of creation. The right hand, then, expresses human acting. Jesus then, gives back to this day of the week. Saturday, the deepest significance. It is the day of joy, of the restoration and not of limitation. What Jesus shows is the messianic Saturday and not the legalistic one. The cures that he does are signs of the messianic times, of restoration, of the liberation of man. The dynamic of the miracle. Luke places before Jesus a man who has a withered hand, dry, paralyzed. Nobody is interested in asking for his cure, much less the one concerned. And just the same. The sickness was not only an individual problem but its effects had repercussion on the whole community. But in our account, we do not have so much the problem of the sickness as that of the aspect that it was done on Saturday. Jesus is criticized because he cured on Saturday. The difference with the Pharisees is that they on Saturday do not act on the basis of the commandment of love, which is the essence of the law. Jesus, after having ordered the man to get in the middle of the assembly, formulates a decisive question. Is it permitted on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? The space for the answer is restricted. To cure or not to cure, or rather, to cure or to destroy. Let us imagine the difficulty of the Pharisees. It is forbidden that evil be done on Saturday or lead man to damnation. And even less to cure. Because help was permitted only in case of extreme need. The Pharisees feel provoked and this causes aggressiveness in them. But it is evident that Jesus' intention in curing on Saturday is for the good of man and in the first place, for the one who is sick. This motivation of love invites us to reflect on our behavior and to found it on that of Jesus who saves. Jesus is not only attentive to cure the sick person but is interested also in the cure of his enemies. To cure them from their distorted attitude in their observance of the law. To observe Saturday without freeing their neighbor from their misery and sickness is not in accordance with the will of God. According to the evangelist, the purpose of the Sabbath is to do good, to save, like Jesus has done during his earthly life. Do you feel involved in the words of Jesus? How do you commit yourself in your service to life? Do you know how to create the necessary conditions so that others may live better? Do you know how to place at the center of your attention and of your commitment every person and all their requirements? Reflect on times you had a choice to help another person, to do good, versus fulfill a requirement or rule. Did you choose rightly? Did you choose as Jesus would have? 
joy for all who take refuge in you. Endless songs of gladness. You shelter them, they rejoice in you. Those who love your name, 